So today is a day I've probably, I've waited for, I think, before I came even into this job. If I could go back in middle school to the time of life that you are in right now and hear these words that are going to be spoken by our speaker today, Michael Perrin, it, it would have changed the trajectory of my life, okay? I'm not going to go into much detail there. I'm just going to say all of the things that he just mentioned, the world will tell you there's an answer for it. And oftentimes, they're going to tell you it's in a drug, okay? And that's one of the things he's going to talk about today. And the reason I particularly wanted to introduce him and bring this up is besides seeing friends die from, look at me, look at me, trying, trying drugs, okay? Trying them. Besides seeing friends die from that, I have an uncle who's in a nursing home. Now he's in his 70s, but he was in a nursing home in his 50s because he had brain damage from drugs, from trying drugs, okay? Drug dealers are not honest or reputable people, and they don't come across that way either. And a lot of times, you won't even know that's who you're dealing with. There'll be someone else they'll send. They'll say, hey, try this. This will help with whatever it is that's hurting you. And it's a lie straight from Satan, okay? So anyone that is in that bondage, as he said, or that moment that you wonder, should I do it? Jeremiah 29, 12. Then, then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when, I know you all know, when, when you seek me with all of your heart. When you stop believing it's going to be something else that's going to fix your problem, because it's not. Only Jesus, eyes on Jesus. It's my honor and privilege to introduce Michael. I've known Michael for years. He's dedicated his life to life recovery. He has his own amazing story. But also, Michael has prayed and sat and developed programs and just been a force in the world to help bring people into the light. And so I'm just delighted. He is right here at the church. Michael Perrin, thank you for coming. Absolutely. Thank you. Got it. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, you know, I was walking over here, and I'm noticing all the construction going on. And I just was, I was struck by all of the things that have happened at, on this campus uh, at Prestonwood, uh, from the new buildings to the pond to the amphitheater that's going in, and the variety of different things. But as I was walking across the parking lot, I had this really random thought go through my head. And it was a moment in which the guys from Dude Perfect came, and what they did was they stood at the top of the prayer tower, that cross out there, and they took a basketball, and you know what? Instead, let me just show you what happened. Just watch this, watch this. This is the cross tower shot. Watch it again. Hold on, girl, now wait just a minute. I've got something to say. You should hear it all. I'm happy to make time. So, pretty impressive, huh? You know, they did something a little bit similar to that recently. And here's, here's how many times, it, you, just in case you're wondering, should I go stand on top of the prayer tower and throw a basketball off and go into a baske basket? Yeah, if you have 900 tries to do it, you'll, you might make one. 900 tries to do it, you might make one. So the chances of you making a basket from the prayer tower are 0.009%. I just want you to think about that today. Red Ribbon Week, as you might know, is a week in which schools all across the nation spend time, like we're doing today, talking about the risk, risks associated with substance abuse and misuse and the misuse of media. And by middle school, you probably have heard messages similar to this at least five times if you're in fifth grade and all the way up to eighth grade, maybe eight times or more. And you've heard that the misuse of media, the misuse of substances, it destroys families, it damages friendships, 
It decreases brain functionality. And quite honestly, it's the doorway to other behaviors, other foolish behaviors. And these, this messaging has gone out. And because of this messaging and decent parenting and self-will, some of you, most of you, have resisted the misuse of substances and the misuse of alcohol and the misuse of media. I want to celebrate you for that. You should be celebrated. However, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> That's not many, not many. We'll keep on. We'll... Listen, guy, listen, one of the things that I, I really want to promote is you need to celebrate yourself. So much of life is geared around what I did wrong, how I didn't perform, what I don't have. You need to celebrate the things you have done, the things you have accomplished. And that was just a side note on all of that. Here's the truth, though. Statistically speaking, here's where it is. 12% of middle schoolers and 25% of high schoolers have or are currently vaping. 8.3% of middle schoolers all the way up to 30% of high schoolers are abusing cannabis. They're smoking, smoking dope, smoking marijuana. Alcohol use among high, schoolers, stu- high school students is 52%. And there's a 94% increase of overdose deaths among middle and high school students. Now, primarily the increase, even though illicit drug use is down from middle school and high school, the increase of overdose is up, primarily because, as Ms. Bauer pointed out, kids are sharing pills that they don't know where they come from, or they're buying pills on the street, and they've been laced with either fentanyl or xylazine. And if you don't know anything about that, you need to be aware of those two drugs in particular. I always wonder those statistics, kind of like you're looking at behind me. If you were to take 10 babies and kind of line them up in front, how would you determine which of those three, according to statistics, would use marijuana in high school? The other aspect of it is if there were 10 babies in front right here and you had to pick which five of those babies would abuse and misuse alcohol in high school. And you want to know the truth? You can't tell. Statistics, while informative, are not precise. They might give you a general idea of what might happen or what probably happens to a group, but you can't tell which individual is going to be part of that statistic. It's kind of like that basketball shot, right? So you take a shot 900 times the odds are you're going to make one. But which one of those shots, you can't tell. It could be 674. It could be number three. But odds are informative. They're not precise. Statistically speaking, I was not a high risk for substance abuse and misuse. Uh, Grew up in Minnesota. Grew up in a loving family. Have loving parents. They're both, they're still married. 60 years now, I think they've been married, and attended church, played sports, did well in school. So statistically speaking, the odds of me ever misusing and abusing drugs and alcohol were were pretty low. But at the age of 15, I went over to a friend's house. I drank a beer for the first time. And after drinking that beer at that friend's house, you might ask, well, were you addicted immediately? And the question probably from the outside would say, no. I mean, I wasn't using all the time. I didn't, I didn't go out every single night and abuse alcohol and drugs or misuse media every single night. I was excellent in athletics. I excelled academically. I was respectful to the people around me. But within me, I was taken captive. You wouldn't see it from the outside. But that first sip of that beer, I was internally addicted. And here was the result. I became an imposter. I became an athlete when I needed to be an athlete, but I was misusing drugs and alcohol on the weekend. I was a solid student when I needed to be a solid student, but I was skipping out of school. 
I was respectful when I needed to be respectful, but I was watching stuff on media that I knew I shouldn't be watching. And I could put on a show at church. I could show up, I could dress the part, I could look the part, but I was really walking in the shadows. The Bible says that when we, if we claim that we share life with Jesus, but keep walking in the realm of darkness, in the realm of shadows, we're fooling ourselves. We're not living in the truth. And that was my life. I was fooling myself. And here's the lies that I told myself. I can stop anytime. It's not that big of a deal. Everybody's doing it. And I'm doing okay. Those were the lies. If you believe a lie, you give authority to the liar, Satan. And then you're going to live out the lie as opposed to living out the truth. That was me. I believe the lie. It's no big deal. I'm not doing it all the time. I can stop anytime I want. And a lot, a lot of other people are doing the very same thing that I'm doing. On the outside, everything was pretty decent, pretty good. But on the inside, everything was not good. You know, I was beginning to fall apart. One beer at a friend's house. I was beginning to fall apart. It's no big deal. I'm not doing it all the time. Others are doing it too. If we claim that we share the life of Jesus, but keep walking in the realm of darkness, we're fooling ourselves, not living in the truth. Jesus says that lies are like leaven. I don't know if you know that story of when Jesus is talking about lies that we believe. They're kind of like leaven. They're kind of a very small part of a batch of dough, like yeast, but eventually it permeates the entire batch, and it permeates the entire part of your life. As the months went on, the lies began to influence my life a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. So instead of just maybe going into the shadows every now and then, I started kind of hanging out in the shadows until eventually I was walking in darkness. Here's the process that it took me. I just kind of started walking in the shadows. One beer here, a couple beers there, a little bit of misuse of media here, eh, not all the time, walking in the shadows. And then I started walking in the darkness. More and more. Yeast grows and grows and grows. Influence grows and grows and grows. I started walking in the darkness, and then ultimately, I started living in the darkness. Failed relationships, flunked out of college, lost jobs, not being kind to people, stealing, lying, deceiving, and really, quite frankly, other things that are just, they're not appropriate to mention this morning. My lie wasn't working anymore. It's no big deal. I can stop any time. Everybody's doing it. It wasn't working because my life was falling apart. I stopped living in the truth. And eventually, eventually, 17 years of walking in the shadows, living in the, sha- living in the darkness, I came back into the light. 17 years. Think about that. One beer, one night at a friend's house. 17 years of living in the darkness. I came out of it, though. I started walking in the light. I made a decision. I stopped living in the shadows as an imposter, and I started walking in the truth of the light of God. Here's what I believed. Paraphrasing, Colossians, read with me. Jesus rescued me completely from the tyrannical rule of darkness. He translated me into the kingdom realm of his beloved son, that my agreement with lies were canceled and I was liberated from my bondage through the blood of Christ. That's the truth that I began believing. I chose to step out of those shadows. I chose to step into the light. I got honest. I became willing to be honest about what was going on in the shadows of my life, the things that I really didn't want everybody else to know. Statistically speaking, If you took 193 of you, that's probably about this many of you. If you took 193 people with my history of drug abuse and misuse, one of them could stand up after two years saying they're sober. Statistically. It doesn't happen statistically. Who made that choice? I did. Because if you remember statistics, I can go back and show you. 
50% of high school students will have used or abused alcohol. 50%. Which of the five decides not to abuse and use alcohol? Each one of them. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you, you're the one that decides which statistic you will be. You have the ability to choose. Even every one of you has a choice to make. What, do you, what is your decision about alcohol, drugs, misuse of media? And because all the information in the world uh, isn't going to stop you. You can hear this all day long. Uh, here's what happens when you abuse and misuse alcohol. Here are the stories like Miss Bauer shared. I could give you hundreds of stories from my experience over at the church trying to help people recover the life that Christ intended for them. But it won't stop you unless you make the decision. You're the one that chooses which statistic you're going to be. And my hope for you, my prayer for you, is you'll choose life. You'll choose to continue to walk in the light of Jesus. For, the, for you guys sitting before me today, I mean, few of you are living in darkness, statistically. Maybe someone. Few of you are actually walking in darkness. Some of you are kind of walking in the shadows. Every now and then, every so often, it's no big deal. I can stop all the time everybody's doing it anyway. And you're kind of in the shadows right now. Remember statistics. Accurate, but not precise. In other words, I can't look out into this room right now. I can't tell you which one of you is walking in the shadows. You know. Holy Spirit knows. And I'm going to offer you something this morning because it was offered to me. The Father's love for you never changes. It doesn't matter if you're walking in the shadows, living in darkness, or have never walked in the shadows or darkness. His love for you never changes. That's what the Bible tells us. You may feel like his love for you changes, but that's not what the Word of God says in Romans. There's nothing, nothing in our present or future circumstances that can weaken the love of the Father. Now hear me, if you choose to walk in the shadows, maybe to live in the darkness, there are going to be consequences. You, you just can't avoid that, right? Remember what I told you? Flunked out of school, failed relationships, DUIs, I mean, it was, it was pretty bad. Consequences. That's not punishment, they're just consequences. And that's part of walking in the shadows. God loves you when you're walking in the shadows, when you're walking in the light, when you're living in darkness, or when you're visiting darkness, it doesn't change at all. Father's love is 100%, always. I, always. I often say it like this. What are the odds with God? 100%. It either will be or it won't be. Now you determine what are the odds for you. You make the choice every single day what statistic you're, you're going to be. I want to invite some of you to step out of the shadows this morning and step into the light of Jesus. I mean, you realize, you know, I, yeah, I'm not, you know, smoking weed or doing meth like you, like me, but there are some things I'm doing. Mm, hope nobody sees me doing this stuff. That's walking in the shadows. And I just want to invite you to walk into the light. For the one, though, that, has, that you've never been captured by the love of the Father, you've never received the gift of salvation this morning, you're walking in the shadows, I want to invite you to walk in the light of Jesus. If you're, you're here now, and like I said, you're kind of walking in the shadows a little bit, maybe you're doing things you know you probably shouldn't, walk in the light. Come into the light today. Somebody might be walking in darkness this morning. You know, and quite frankly, in a group this big, there are maybe one or two of you that are living in darkness, and you just can't seem to find a way out. So what will you decide? It's your choice. It's your decision. Here's the reality. I never thought one beer 
at a friend's house on a weekend would last 17 years. You with me? One weekend lasted 17 years of my life. I never thought me misusing media and looking at stuff that I knew I shouldn't be looking at, I never thought that one time of doing that would last me 20 years of my life. So what are you going to choose today? What are you going to choose every day? My prayer for you is this. You will be the statistic that makes a basket every single time. Let me pray for us. Father, thank you for these lives that are here this morning. I realize in a group this big, some are walking in the shadows. Some are walking in darkness. And God, there's, there's even a couple in here this morning that are probably living in darkness. And they just cannot seem to find a way out. I pray that by the power of your spirit, you would embolden them to walk in truth, to walk in the light today, today. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Before you stop, if you're walking in the shadows, talk to somebody. You can come up and you can talk to me afterwards. Nobody's going to look at you weird, okay? You can talk to a teacher. You can talk to a counselor. You can talk to your parents about what's going on. But walk in the light. Because I don't want your life to be like my life was, where one time lasted 17 years. Find somebody to talk to, okay? All right. God bless you all. We'll see you. Thanks.